Happy Cinco de Mayo. Hey, everybody. How you Hola. doing? Happy Cinco de Mayo. <laughs> nice to see you. I think it's Feliz Cinco de Mayo. Feliz Cinco de Mayo. So that's the thing. Like, I, I don't really know. My Spanish is kind of uh, not great. Mm -hmm. I can understand a few words here and there, right, but right. I'm not. But, you know, I, I've always been told this is a great day for drinking, so. <laughs> well, I've, 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 uh, I've traditionally proven that to be true. <laughs> uh, yeah. Not, not. Yeah, but so is like you know, Thursday, in February. <laughs> now, nowadays, during nowadays, the, during this yeah. whole thing, crazy. But um, yeah, so it's a fun day, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. So, so traditionally, today, I don't know about you, but I've I've spent a lot of time in my life uh, celebrating this particular day. Yes, sure. absolutely. Uh, Going out, uh, obviously, we got tequilas things. and margaritas and uh, tacos. It's always a good time. Every place that you've ever drank at will always have some type of I know. special mm -hmm. Cinco de Mayo. It's always a good time. And we start every episode, as you guys know, uh, with a beer. So we review a beer. Today, you know, fortunately or unfortunately, we're, we're going with Corona. In the spirit of? I got three of them. Instead <laughs> oh, okay. of splitting one, we we'll, we'll can each have one. He's wonderful. Why the heck not? Maybe are you, we'll, um... And so Coronas are one of those beers that I've kind of been told, you pick it out of the bottle, you grab a lime from over there. I'm gonna have a lime, sure. Why not? Why not? I'm 50-50 I'm on the lime. Yeah? I don't do a lot of Corona. Sometimes I do lime, sometimes I don't. So like, what's the, is there a trick of like shoving the thing in there? Yeah, or? you're supposed to squeeze some squeeze lime it in, in it and then push it down in. Well, these are cut yeah, I, I've never, I've swallow? never done that. I just go right in. Go put, right put in? Put it right I in. go right in. Well, I think and, my guy's then, too big. <laughs> and then I do what Sean does. Thumb in it, tip and then you it gently. Turn it away from yourself and not towards the electrical equipment. Well, no, just week do week it really slowly. I'm, not, I'm not doing it. My guy's way too big. I can't get him in. <laughs> the line uh, put a little muscle in it. <laughs> well, whatever. Corona. Cor Cheers. Cheers, guys. I know. So it's, it's actually um, when I I had some friends that spoke uh, Spanish, and when they would cheers, they'd say Salud. arriba. Oh, Arriba. Arriba. Right. Abajo. Abajo. El centro. El centro. El centro. To, together. El centro. El dentro. El dentro. El dentro. Let's go. All right. Perfect. Oh, so, man, so good. I, so I don't usually do a lime when I do. Uh, really? Yeah. I'm, I'm, like I said, here, miss. I feel like, uh, I don't know if it's true, but like the folklore behind it is that like they, they use lime to help cover the taste of the bad tasting water. Like basically, it was like a way to like drink the <laughs> drink yeah. it. But I think over the years, they've mastered the flavor of the Mexican beer. Like you know what it is. It's going to be yeah. what it is. And I don't personally don't think it needs the lime. This is my plus. I'm not a huge fan of bar fruits. Yep. Anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Right. <laughs> Unless they're handled reasons. like the way we do them with the separate things, <laughs> and everybody's got the the tongs and stuff. Yes. But that's not always the case. Yep. Yep. And even before COVID. <laughs> Yeah. I wasn't a great fan of somebody grabbing a handful of something throwing it in my mouth. Yeah, ear. and then shoving it in there, right? I don't blame you. Right. <laughs> Can I tell you my Corona story real quick? Please. Like, so, like, this is like, if, uh, I don't know, and Sean, maybe you can relate a little bit because you're married into a Greek family, yep. a traditional Greek family. Yeah. And uh, my family is, you know, from the Middle East, uh, traditional Middle Eastern family, always family get-togethers or whatever. And it's like kind of like an inside joke that they don't know how to drink. So they'll drink Corona and Heineken, and they'll have those you know, shoved in their fridges forever. Mm -hmm. So my experience with Corona is possibly, sorry, it's like is having um, skunked Corona at like a family <laughs> holiday party. Just been in their fridge like, forever. And yeah, and so I drank this growing up and I just, I, like, I almost can't stomach it. Like, it reminds me of those days, mm -hmm. but like, I'm just like so over it. And I'll have one, I could crush yeah. them, you know, sunny yeah. day, single to Mayo, whatever, but. I would never go for a Corona. Yeah. Individ uh, maybe a Heineken, but Corona, I'm just like, meh. Yeah. Negro Modelo. I do like Negro Modelo. Yes. That's mm -hmm. one that I do yeah. drink. Me too. At, at Cancun's often. Yeah, I like it. And of course, yeah, I, mean, I was going to say, around. I mean, uh, on a traditional, I think this is the first Cinco de Mayo in 10 years where I, I'm not buying at least one margarita at Cancun's. At Cancun's, yeah. We definitely. Uh, oh, I man, definitely. We miss you guys. We would be, you know, Carlos, if you were open, we would be there. I promise. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> yep. But, so I, you know, I actually can drink Corona no problem. Yes. Yeah. It fits into my sort of. It's a little sweeter than I like typically, yep. but mm -hmm. um, you know, especially like I don't know, probably because of the marketing, but like on the beach, a cooler full of Corona cans, 
cold, I'll dig deep, you know, like Grandpa used to say, dig deep, and uh, grab the cold one at the bottom, and I think uh, I could do. I can drink those. Absolutely. Not, not could I? I have drank those all day, <laughs> no problem. And um, it's a little bit different than your traditional, just uh, you know. Run yeah, the it, beer. it's its own style of beer. I mean, Absolutely. I don't know if you. Got, I'm sure you remember, but last year. And maybe a little bit before, but last year in particular, a lot of the American craft breweries did a Mexican style beer. Yeah. It was really common to see um, a Mexican style beer. And I, I haven't really looked much this year, but um, that was the thing. There were definitely a lot of local craft brewers making their beer because it's, it's a style. I mean, you can definitely recognize the taste of a Mexican style beer. So we'll hold on to these and we'll be drinking these throughout. Absolutely. <laughs> and uh, Cinco, <laughs> Cinco de Mayo. And we were kind of talking about um, just what a Cinco de Mayo and. and you know, how do we celebrate? Where do we celebrate? I was talking about the good old days when we could go out pre-COVID. And tequila came up. And I admittedly didn't know much about tequila. And even now I don't. So I was like, you know, Josh and Sean both said they got tequila covered. And I'm like, let's do it on the show tonight. So yeah. maybe we, we go over it and kind of just talk about it. And, and we can learn a little bit about tequila. Maybe we taste a few of them. Why not? Sure, you know? sure. Well, I would say... Um uh, a lot of people have tequila stories. Yep. <laughs> Not <Okay>. always good ones. <laughs> it's a, it's an interesting. Um, it's funny how certain alcohols fall into certain categories that where people put them like mentally. Like, I think very often people associate tequila <laughs> with just. I mean, with you know, with the songs like "Tequila Make Your Clothes Fall Off" and yep. stuff. Yep. You know, like, if you're doing tequila, you're ready for your night. Tequila is like the. Well, what is that popular show? One tequila, two tequila, three tequila, floor? Right. Yeah, floor. <laughs> I mean, what, what, what's up? Why do people, is it just because of how it hides well in the strings? Is it, is it a different I, style? or? You know, for me, I just remember in college, and before, before the good tequilas really started to come to America, and it was, you know, Jose Cuervo or... Uh, Montezuma's Mon- Yeah, it was, <laughs> and it was usually just a tre- cheap college drink and uh, ooh, shots of it. You know, drink, eat the worm, yep, that kind yeah. of thing. Um, <clears throat> but then tequila has definitely had a renaissance since then. I mean, there's we were talking about it earlier. How many, how many famous people are involved with some sort of tequila, right? Like mm-hmm. uh, you got Dan Aykroyd, you got George, George Clooney, Clooney, you got uh, Sammy Hagar was one of the first with yeah. Paul Mitchell. Marvel. Paul Mitchell owns Patron. Right. A lot of people. He made Paul Mitchell the white and black uh, so, shampoo. Yeah. What's up with the different tequilas? Why Why do we have so many out here? Is it- not sure. For show or what are we doing? Well, they so they start off just like any liquor. You got to take something that will ferment, and you got to then distill it. And depending on whether you distill it and age it, you'll end up with a clear liquor, white lightning, white dog, whatever you want to call it, moonshine. This is the um, all the product fermented but not aged in a barrel. And then they age them in barrels, and they get darker and darker as you go. Exactly. So there's there's typically there's three three kinds of tequila yeah. right there's silver yep. which are is the basically distilled and bottled it goes right from the distillery into a bottle and sold it doesn't have to age it can this is tequila companies love these again because yep. you can distill it and sell it without having to store it and wait for the and then the next one uh, after silver called comes reposado and reposado in Spanish means rest resting rested so basically Anything that goes into a, any, anytime this happens and they put it into a barrel yep. for less than a year, a year or less, it's called reposado. And that's going to, you, you'll, you'll usually be able to tell it's going to have some of those like woody flavors or the woody color like it's been, but it's not going to be anywhere near as dark as something like an añejo, which means year in Spanish, right? So anything over a year, you're going to get an añejo. So this is sort of like going to have pulled more of the flavors out of the wood. So if I'm going for like a sipping tequila, I'm going with the Añejo, the, the aged stuff. And well, if I'm going yeah, for maybe a margarita tequila, I'm going with the silver stuff. You know, right? it's, it's again, it's taste, right? Um, certain tequilas are going to mix better with other mixers. So you're going to, depending on what you're making your margarita, nowadays margarita is the, you know, you go anywhere from a peach margarita to yeah, yeah. traditional yeah. Cadillac margarita and anything in between you can mix them with. Like here in the restaurant, we have got some that we mix with palm, uh, which is a uh, pomegranate liqueur. We've got mm-hmm. cranberry and peach and all these different other things. Um, so certain elements of those will be highlighted by the different kinds of things, depending. 
But uh, you know, traditionally, if I'm making a margarita, I'm not putting super expensive liquor in it because once you start adding the the mixer, so, so it takes depends. away from the day. If I'm doing like tonight, we're going to make one later. Mm -hmm. uh, but if we're doing one um, with, if you're using all fresh juices and you're using right. Um, Grand Marnier or Contro. Yeah, different levels of mixers. You're going to want to go up the ladder a little bit, and my, personally, because that's going to enhance the flavor. But once you do like a traditional margarita where you've bought the margarita mix in the store, and it, you're not going to be able to tell the difference. Okay. I mean, maybe you will if you're a tequila expert, but um, for the most part, you just want to get something that's affordable that's not going to kill so you in the morning. in terms of tasting, <laughs> do you guys want to do like... Like, I, I mean, we, we could probably do sh shots of all these, but then, you know, it might, it might ruin the product <laughs> a little bit. Do you want to try maybe a little bit of this, and then we go to the top shelf stuff and a little bit of that and just acknowledge yeah, sure. the differences? Or do we want to do a little bit of each? How do you want to do this? I love to taste some. I wouldn't taste mind them. doing a silver, a reposado, and an añejo. All right. Yeah. Then I'm going, I'll be right back. I'm going to grab a glass. Shot I've got a few shot glasses right here. Oh, you have them already? Yeah. Josh, you are. Through the magic of television. You are. <laughs> So let's start. We have, uh, uh, real quick, we have Danny Davis saying, last time I was in this restaurant, I was sitting right there. Wish I was there having a margarita right now. Hi, We're Danny sure Davis. Up, Danny. Thank you, man. Appreciate it. love that. Danny Davis. Oh. Danny Davis works at one of my favorite restaurants in the greater area, the, the mill. Just some of the nicest people up there in West Boylston. Yep. Tony. Tony is the owner and the staff that works there, fantastic. And where is that uh, again? It's in West Boylston. The right mill in West Boylston. The, it's, yep. it's called 135, the mill, when you try to look it up online. Yep. Um, good people. I know they're open for takeout and family size awesome. and stuff. So Danny, great thank people. Thank you, uh, So I am going to be a little selfish and start with the Patron Silver rather than the... So that's our, this, this is our well, yeah, our well tequila, um, which, you know, it's, it's decent. It's perfect for a yeah. margarita. Just a taste. Just a taste. Oh, you guys want to try oh, it? Oh, you did the Montalban. I'm just going to do the Montalban. Oh, okay, yeah, let's so. try it. Fine, let's try it. All right, just a, like, like not even a... Yeah, just a taste. Yeah, just enough to, <laughs> to know I'm drinking uh, well tequila. Yeah, I mean... All right, so this is Montalban. This is our well tequila. It was like a little Wait, bit of... I forgot. The, Arriba, oh. abajo, Arriba. el centro, el, el dentro. dentro. <laughs> Good. I mean, so like, it's just like harsh. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't little, recommend shooting it. A little harsh. Maybe that's something that would hide well yeah. in, a, in it a margarita. It yeah. will, but that, that high alcohol thing that comes at the end, it yep. really tastes like you just maybe breathed in some rubbing alcohol. Yes. Yeah, you that's get a lot of that ethanol thing off of and it. And so like... The, a true tequila is what, like fifty-one percent blue agave, right? Yeah, it can be more, but it has to be fifty-one percent blue agave, I and believe, or agave. So is, is oh, and this Montalban is one hundred percent agave. So yep. Who knows? What's agave? I believe it's a plant that grows in Mexico. but yeah, that's exactly. all I really know. It right. looks like a giant aloe plant. Okay. It almost looks like aloe. Um, yeah, but when they're used, when they're fermenting, right? Yeah, they so, uh, well, they cook. They, I believe, they. They actually cook them a little bit, right? They first they grow them, then they have these um, machetes almost that they with two hands and they put a foot on it and they chop all the parts off that they're going to ferment and then they they stack them up I think and they like cover them with cloth and let them cook a little while and then right. they mash them up. And I think there's, there's to make different the, uh, in the same way that uh, Scotch works. There's um, depending on what they're using to heat up. Yeah. yeah. The agave is going to add different flavors into it. Yeah, you so, can get some that are real smoky. Yeah. So if they're some that are clean. Cool so, charcoal. Uh, maybe I don't want to convolute this too much, but the, the difference between that and mezcal is those are, that's a different style. It's, that's not even a tequila, right? Mezcal is mezcal. Tequila yeah. is tequila, correct? Correct. All right. And we, do we have a mezcal here? Yeah, we do. We do. All right, well, let's not convolute yeah. it. Then. Well, maybe, maybe later on. But. <laughs> a lot of so, people substitute it, though. It's, so uh, here, here, just let's take... A little sip of the, the so this is Patron, Patron so, silver. So same family, but you're gonna tell. Yep, it's smoother. You can just smell it right off the bat. Yeah, it's easier to smell. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I mean, night and night and day. More complex and, and flavor. Technically, the same style of tequila, night and day, with how easy that was, how smooth it was. Yep. And I mean, Patron is probably probably the most popular brand. I actually am a big fan of Don Julio. We yeah, have actually same. Don Julio there as well. Mm -hmm. um, but Patron is to Carlos on that because when I went yeah, to Carlos uh, Cancun's one time, he turned me on. You got to try Julio. the Don Julio. Yep. Yeah. And I believe it was the Anejo one, but I got, ended up yeah. getting Patron. All those guys over there are good with their tequilas. They're awesome. <laughs> they don't 
They never uh, slow down with them, but other than that. <laughs> yeah. All right, so let's see the difference. This is um, Reposado. So this one is called uh, Tequila Chamucos. And uh, so basically in Spanish it says, it's time for us to go. And there's a bunch of uh, demons flying around the bottle. Mm -hmm. And this is 100% agave. This looks scary to me, mm. but I think I like it. It's beautiful. Let's go. I'm excited. Hmm. So this would be, so this, uh, one, this is Resposado again, rested. Yep, Resposado. So it have a, it, less than a year. Less than a year. But you're going to, the same exact way, you're going to see it in wine, or you're going to see it in bourbon, bourbon or scotch. Or you're going to yeah. see it in scotch. You, hmm. The longer, basically, all it's doing is whatever the wood is of the barrel, it's just soaking that flavor into the into the liquor. So it's, there's nothing, they literally take silver and just put it into barrels. But the barrels. Yeah, and I don't know, do they have, do they use aged barrels? <clears throat> uh, so I know like in the whiskey world, uh, not in bourbon, but in a lot of whiskey worlds, or even in bourbon, um, they'll finish it in a finishing barrel. And it could be a sherry cask, Oloroso, or uh, could be a port cask. There's lots of things. You can, any any um, wine cask or, or some other liqueur might have been in it or liquor. And they use those to finish them and add different flavors. So I'm not sure how common that is in tequila. To use um, if they use just charred oak barrels, or if they have a I'll be finishing. With you, I, don't know I would imagine they they can. Mm. You know, there's not a ton because of rules around know. it, so they probably do a lot of that. I wonder if it's barrels or if it's you know. Definitely barrels. The, the only way you're going to get the wood is from a charred barrel. And um, you know, the other so, thing too, we're, we're, the way we're doing these, real quick. All right. So immediately. <laughs> Completely, different. you can get the taste of the wood. It's like the, the, there's like a vanilla thing that happens. Yes. It smooths it's it getting, over. Yep. It takes a lot of the the bright alcohol flavor. Absolutely, not even the flavor, but that um, that airy alcohol that fills up in your face. It kind of goes away a little bit. The after notes are more. So that um, I could see that could be a preferential thing. I think myself, pers a personal thing, I enjoyed that more. I felt like that felt. Yep. a little bit more like there was substance to it. Yep. There was more going on in there than there was in the Patron. Yeah, I agree. And so we, we're not doing, uh, you know, salt and lime and all that stuff, right? No. Oh, yeah. So that's, uh, <laughs> What's going on with in that? The, in the bartending world, we call those training wheels. Yeah. Uh, do you need training wheels? When uh, you order te tequila shots? Yeah, so, I mean, that, it's the same thing as the lime, right? Yeah. So if all we had was this bottle, <laughs> Yeah. And we were trying to stomach our way through it for the night. We'd probably need lime and salt. We'd need lime, lime and salt. salt. Anything we could to just get the flavor right. and just get it into our gut, in my belly. Yes. And, but, <laughs> Chips and <laughs> salsa. But like, once you, it's the same thing. Like, if you have a really nice high-end liquor and you pour Kool-Aid into yes. it, it's like you. Yeah, you you just, don't shoot it, you know. So this you shoot we, the they, cheap they, stuff to get it down. They've done so much to get the flavor right in these that you're just supposed to enjoy it as it is. Yeah. So we, I got my. See, the thing is, I'll admit that these are my cousins. These are my people Fine. that I've been watching who, I, who I love. My cousin, Andrew, and his By the way, awesome he, wife, Brittany. He Brittany only admits says, he only, <laughs> he only admits you're his cousin on TV. Usually, he'll <laughs> deny it. Britt says, can't wait to get back to reunion. And Andrew's asking us, what's the best drink you make with tequila? Hold that thought, Andrew. All right, we're going to get there in about two seconds. Just for yeah. Let us enjoy our tequila here. All right, all right so. so <laughs> no, wait, wait, real quick. Right. What is Patron? This? So this is the Añejo, right? Yep, Añejo. Right. So this is going to be like a step above the Resposado that we just had. Well. Uh, it's going to cost a little more, typically. Just because it's cause aged longer and it evaporates. Right. And um, that's basically, a lot of them will say, you know, age 12 years, age 5 years. Age, but all it really needs to be is aged more than a year. And you can call it. And so that's just going to, by aging it, it's just going to absorb more of that flavor. More of the, it's going to be a little bit more... Um, yeah. Complex, if you will, and, the flavor and a lot of that that like alcoholic, uh, you know, alcohol. Uh, what's it called? Evaporates. Evaporates, yeah. right? So yeah. if you the, look the at proof, a bottle, the of, proof stays similarily high. If you if a lot if a, let it sit long enough, more will evaporate. So their their yield. That's why a lot of it's more expensive. Right. The yield goes way down. They lose over you know Understood. ten years. The angels forty percent left of the barrel because the rest evaporated. Yeah. So. They yeah. call it the angel's share in, yeah, in exactly. the whiskey world, but it's the same anywhere, yeah. Well, because a wooden barrel is really not completely airtight. So that's part of what makes it work. Makes sense. When the barrel heats up and cools down, 
the liquor that's inside absorbs into the wood and then comes out of the wood and goes into the wood and comes out and of the in, wood. In the whiskey world, not to comment on everything, yeah. but they, they've found ways to uh, take that alcohol out of the wood, right? Yeah, so they call that the devil's cut. So the angel shares the stuff that evaporates, yeah. that brings the levels down and makes it more expensive. Time it takes a long time to do it, and it evaporates, so that's one, one of the reasons whiskeys get more expensive. Um, but the devil's cut is what is left behind in the wood after you drain the barrel. And um, people are doing all kinds of things. Like they're getting that out. They'll, they'll, yeah, they can extract it out or they'll just take the staves and reuse the staves in new barrels so they can add that into the, the flavor of it. And That's there's, there, there's a, the things going on in the whiskey world are unbelievable. Well, we're right going to get there's, to all that stuff. Yeah, we'll do that. Someday. With these, with these shows. All right, let's but, try it. Sure, so this is the top shelf stuff that we got the best of the best uh, Añejo that we have here today. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah, smoother, easier. Just keeps getting smoother. Yeah. Yeah. So that that is like um, candy. Yeah, that is definitely you could drink that neat by itself yep. all night. Yep. That is super smooth. That is not. I mean, it, it might as well be a different liquor. Com- yeah. To this completely, in terms of right to call the both tequila is it's weird. Insane. Yeah. Yeah. Right, because this seems so completely different than that one. Yep. They do all have that one thing that agave does, though, is there's that little bit of a smoky thing underneath that's got um, just the way when you matru- when you distill agave, yeah. ferment it. Got a little teeny funky thing underneath it that everyone probably recognizes as tequila. And that stays throughout. But it's part of the charm of the process. So, that was awesome. I would say I have learned more about tequila today. Yeah, and I'm up. completely warmed up. I'm like ready to go. Um, <laughs> Let's do something fun with this. And I know you said you, so Josh, as we've said before, has been a bartender, uh, has been in the restaurant industry for a very long his time. His whole life. His, no, first, his first job. Yeah, my very, well, my first restaurant job, I was 14 years old, dishwashing at the Grafton Inn, right here in Grafton. Hey, Jay. <laughs> yeah. Don't know if Jay's watching, but. Jay, Jay Hunter wasn't he was the owner at the, the time, but. Uh, I still think of that place every time I'm in. I feel like I'm home. Cause it's, uh, we have a lot of fun memories from there. Yeah. The McGill sisters yeah. and just the staff, Rick, and uh, just some fun times. Yep, yeah, for sure. So um, that was your first job, and then yeah. you've been all the way. You've ridden the gamut: bartender to general manager to now restaurant owner. Yeah. So you've been around. You know your stuff. What is your drink of choice with tequila? What are we making today? So again, like we were talking about before, there's kind of. There's the, so many different levels of what you're doing. Um, you know, I've been feeling uh, during this particular time, yep. I'm kind of taking an extra second with everything I do. You know, like, I'm not, and then I'm cooking at home. I'm taking a little extra second oh, to make some stuff by hand rather than... Got nothing but time at the moment. And so, like, if I'm, if I'm working in the college bar in Manhattan that I used to work and I'm making a margarita, yep. I want bottle of tequila, a bottle of tequila, uh, margarita mix, and some salt. And I go, whoosh, splish it up and get it out of here before I can. But if I'm making one for myself to drink, I'm going to take some time. I'm going to add fresh fruit. I'm going to add uh, the higher end mixers to give it a little more of a flavor. Yep, yep. Um, and so if I'm at home, that's what I'm doing. Mm-hmm. So that's what we're going to do today. Love it. All right, so, so happy salt rim or that. not? For me, absolutely salt rim. I'll t- I agree, absolutely for me. Yeah. I, lo- I love the salt in it, I which think. is funny because we call it training wheels if you're drinking it straight. Yeah. But something about the sweet and sour and salt together it makes it a yeah. One, fun... Once you once you're adding to it, you yeah. gotta yeah. have the yeah. salt. Josh and I had um, Gary Benaquista, our general manager for almost two years, who's um, still one of our best friends. Worked at a place in New York called Dallas Barbecue, right oh. next to the right next to the Dakota where John Lennon lived and was unfortunately shot outside of. Uh, but Gary was there, and they had, a me- they had a margarita menu. Like, literally, they had a page of margaritas on their bar menu. And Josh and I were down in New York, and we went to go get Gary, and he had to stay a little bit later at work. So we sit at the bar, and Gary said, oh, they should just try some of our margaritas. They're so good. And Gary was a little late, come late getting off the shift, so we literally went through. <laughs> we drank them all. We literally drank them all. It was 110 degrees out. It was a Fourth of July weekend. Yeah. Oh, perfect. We went to Ryan Park and saw. We went to Brent, Daisy saw Tripping Daisy play at Ryan Park. Brian that was, Park. was a good great. weekend. That's awesome. Uh, but we literally went from the standard to the El Presidente Cadillac. Right. They named, you know that you see those. And, you know, I, I didn't even mention. Typically, when people think of 
but margarita for a long, 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 long time up until, I don't know, I'd say late 90s. Yeah. It was a frozen drink. Right. It, Done like, slushy everybody style, right? thought of, I think, and I don't know this for sure, but I think places like Friday's. I'm going to think this. That's sort of. Uh, this, frost, this company. And this com- and semi yeah. And, and they just put, like, the whole idea of, you know, uh, getting a big frothy frozen margarita well, was right. a thing. You'd go to yeah. Ruby Tuesdays or you'd go to these places and yeah. they'd have the, you know, not to be sexist, but you usually see a couple women after work drinking these giant pink and blue. What's and wrong with being sexy? And and you just have the bucket of margaritas, yeah. and they're still kind of known for it. I and know then, they uh, sell a ton. Then of them. like traditionally, then like as like um, well, the Mexican, like a, the Mexicans found out. So what the hell are you guys doing? Well, there's you're that, ruining our damn drink. There's that, and then I think uh, <laughs> somewhere along the right around the mid to late '90s, bartenders just started some sort of social group where they all said no more mix fuck frozen drinks yes and they started breaking every every mixer that was in every cutting, bar cutting the cords no I'm the... sorry the mixer's blo- the blender's <laughs> broken the blender's broken you don't broken. have any time to try to when I was 21 <laughs> yeah. blender's broken again yeah we, we've we had understand. a conversation here like we have always thought it might be fun to run like just one frozen drink maybe as a special we have customers that ask for all the time Every one of our bartenders has basically threatened to quit <laughs> across the board. Like, you know how much of a pain in the ass those things are to clean and they break? And so, so we're not going to do. So we're not. We're going to do the tradition. This the, we're going to do it the right way. The yes. lime and everything. Not a fruity one. Not a strawberry one. Not a whatever. We're going to yeah, do a legit. So what's in a traditional margarita anyway? Yep. So it's it's always got tequila. Yep. yep. It's always got some sort of orangey. Not always, but. In a traditional triple one, you're going to get a triple sec typically. Contro. Yeah. But let, as we talked about yesterday, Grand can, Marnier. there's other liquors that kind of do the same thing. Yep. Quattro, Grand Marnier, Blue Curacao, if you want to make Curacao. it blue and funky again. Yeah. Use that bottle that you bought for yesterday's drink. Yeah. Yes. You want to use it for today, you can and make it. it's still fun. the same flavor profile. Just yeah. It looks blue. blue. Yeah. Right. And some are more refined and taste more like real orange, and some taste like artificial orange and sugary. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, you want a lemon. Oh, oh, I'm, so I'm sorry. We're going top shelf. We're going to probably do Grand Marnier. We're going to do yeah. exactly. I'm going to do. I'm going to. Well, let's just go ahead and do it. So while I mean, you're doing that, I'm going to step I'm gonna over I'm going to take a, a look bit. at the, uh, the comments. Comments, over yeah. There. You want me to clear some of these out? Which sure. one are you going to use? I think we're going to go with the idea. Okay. So my brother's asking us, are, can we keep the microphone at the bar after we reopen? Sure. <laughs> I mean, uh, you know, maybe. I don't know. You're going to just talk into it, bro? What are you going to do? So, um, and then Paul is kidding. No, Paul. I, I, think, I think I'm good. I think it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> he said that he thinks my fly is down. I don't think it's fine. <laughs> he's to get he might head. mean mine. Paul's a dear friend. Paul's the architect, the guy who literally designed. All these fun um, textures and everything you see. Reunion. We, we made a joke that we were going to carve, you know, seat number one out for him. Like, that's the spot. Uh, Paul's, if Paul's you, he's a brother. If you've ever yeah. been in our restaurant and used the Wi-Fi, uh, Paul's name is on the Wi-Fi. Yeah, one of the Wi-Fi. So we named the Wi-Fi Paul. after Paul. And so, it's still there. We never changed it back. Um, Paul's having margaritas and tacos because yeah. he was here, uh, stopped by earlier today, and went across the street and bought some tequila. He said he was celebrating single to mile. So yep. drink with us, Paul, all right? And make the same margarita. <laughs> that's right. Now. So um, the fun thing about um, margaritas are, I like, so people, there's so many different vessels, but yep. people like to put margaritas in, yep. you know, big. Frozen. I don't mind them in these. No, me neither. But I, traditionally, I'm a pint guy. Sure. Bloody Marys and margaritas just in a pint glass. Yep. And there's two benefits to that. Uh, one, it's just easy to, you know, they find pint glasses everywhere and it's not going to be some like dangerous so after, after a couple tequilas you don't want to be handling really breakable glass you know? yep, yep. Uh, but the nice thing is you can build the drink right in the glass yeah those are great so when you're doing the shaker you're like you can question all the time is it all going to fit in there i don't know am i pouring it right but if you build it in the glass you can now see, you, you know you, exactly. do you still use the shaker though to, to, right so yep. you, after you build but you build it in the glass i love any drink you can build in the glass is great build it in the pint glass because you can see what you're doing yep yes. full ice pretty so, much yeah i get you know right about I, 80 percent that's that's a preference you know yeah. i just always i'm all about 80 percent got it um and so we're going to use some patron and we're, some... we're going top shelf on this one guys yes at home and so you, we could very well use the mount alban or whatever sure. but yeah we're going to spoil ourselves today yeah, yeah. The mile, you know so go all out i haven't if, I like, if you have I... the eight stuff at home use that yeah i haven't had a margarita since our last taco tuesday which was now six weeks ago right by the way, it is Taco Tuesday too, right? I mean, that's kind of cool. I know. It's a nice 
The stars are aligned. Know, we have the aligned. we have the I coronavirus. Know. It is Tuesday. We would have it would have been awesome today. Yeah. We have, so reunion with Zoo and Taco Tuesdays. Yeah. And we didn't tonight because Tuesdays are also usually one of the slower nights in the restaurant industry. But some of the some of our local friends with restaurants are doing taco stuff. Shout tonight. out to Sarah who helped us out. Sarah to Sarah who helped us That's out right. with all the recipes. Yes. Yeah, so all our tacos. And those are ba- those will come back. Yeah, um, sure. Absolutely. We yeah we make a couple of really great tacos. Legit, like. Right, not not nothing against the American taco, nothing against the old El Paso taco kit and all, yeah, yeah. but we're doing like good stuff. Yeah, like <laughs> yeah, the real tacos. deal. Like, all right, I'm thirsty. Let's okay, go. Right. so um, I know yesterday I just kind of freely poured. Uh, mm-hmm. Yes, and you're gonna so measure out with the when when the bottle has one of these pours on it. You I don't mind it. doing that. These bottles have these like wide open. Blub, 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 blub. Yes, yeah, yeah. you don't know way you can you... put a thing in there, uh, and plus. The reality is the drink, certain drinks are better when you get the actual, get it yeah. right, you know? Yeah, so well, science behind some, some really strong stuff in a margarita, right. right? Too much lime can be weird. Too much orange can be weird. Too right. much tequila. You want about, it's got to be balanced. So I need about two ounces of tequila for this guy. Perfect. So, I don't know if you see it, it comes up to about middle of the glass that. when you count the... Thing. Now, if you were, if you had a pour or a spout, it'd be a five count. No, no, that, that's like one and two and. Gotcha. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, and you know, I was I was talking about Grand Marnier, but I really think Cointreau. Cointreau is fine. The, all right, that's the fine. Grand Marnier is going to add a, a different the element that layer. is fun, but it's not. It's a little outside of the what I want. Sure, there. sure. So I'm just going to go with Cointreau. We talked about Cointreau the other day. Yep. So Cointreau here you want to get about a half ounce in there. And then that's going to give us that orange zing. Yep. And then you basically you need some s- simple syrup. Yeah, yes. a little sweet. Which we talked about. Also, we've talked about in past uh, episodes. It's just water and sugar. Put it on the stove, half and half. As much water as you put sugar. Wait till it's clear. Take it off. Let it cool. Put it in the thing. Yep. And uh, again, about about that. About about the same, am- same same amount you put in as a contro. And then comes the fun part. A little bit of a workout, but we're gonna. Well, we got the machine. We're that gonna machine. put some fresh limes in there. Need lime. Now you can buy lime juice. Yeah. So many like roses, lime juice is traditional. It's a it's a great one to yep. use. Um, and a lot of companies now just sell pure lime juice in a container, like you, you know, like you right. can just buy the lemon. There's the lemon one and the lime one. There's mm-hmm. a couple companies that do it. You just don't you don't want one that's got too much added stuff to it. Um, so I'm gonna. Um, Got a juicer here. A juicer happens to be a lemon juicer, but you know it'll make do. It's the same deal. I pretty hope, is pretty much. Lime there is, yeah. The lime ones are different, but it's so, just a size thing. Does everyone makes the same mistake with this machine? If you have one of these at home, people think because it's shaped like a bottom, you put it in like this. Yep. Nope. You Other way. The exact opposite. And put then it in flat all you side do down. is you just. Oh you, yes. you don't get a lot Let's of juice go. in there. That's a one, that's a pretty good amount of juice. Yeah. Oh, I Hi, Dave Rivers. How are you? Thanks for joining. I mean, I think any time, any time you can use uh, fresh ingredients, right? You're gonna always, always better. And what do you th- yeah, so that was pretty juicy. So for that particular one, you do the juice of one lime, you think, or more? Oh no, I'm going you can do a lot more. I'm liming this baby up. Yeah, yeah, I'm going as much lime as I can fill in this thing. That's basically all I have left. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know, if we. A lot of times I'll also throw in a little splash of orange juice. Yep, I've seen it, that. Uh, it's all different. Like, you can look them up online. There's, like, the Cadillac Mar- Margarita, which was, like, got real popular in the 80s. That was a, that's the one where that was uh, orange Kind of juice. when Cadillacs were popular. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. I haven't seen a cat. I feel like, other than maybe the Escalade, I feel like Cadillac's kind of a dying brand. Well, I, don't, I could be wrong, but no. So they're trying really know, hard with know. the sedan and everything like that, but there's nothing like those older oh, school. Also, I've Fun washed off. I wanted the first to say car I ever totaled. I was 16 years old. <laughs> he totaled the Cadillac. I was stopping shot my dad's Cadillac. He was not happy with it. Yeah, safe uh, car though. <laughs> safe car. That was like driving. That was oh, like yeah, driving was a tank. Fine. I was exactly. I mean, I was safe. Car was not though, unfortunately. <laughs> Sorry, dad. <laughs> yeah, no. Does he know we're doing this, by the way? <laughs> Shout out to Elias if you're there. If not, we'll let you, we'll, we'll we'll text you and let you know because I'm sure he'd get a kick out of it. Uh, <clears throat> he'd be like, "Stop drinking all the booze." So, <laughs> <laughs> for me, this is it's, 
That's all you need. Yeah. Perfect. I mean, I I'm the kind, I I will just drink water with lemon or water with lime in it all the time. Like I I'm I love lime juice like that. I'll just, right. Like so yeah, limeade make it. Like, so you could do a million other things too. Sure. Literally, you could just. You could so add you strawberry could, puree. You can so book, we, right now we have four ingredients in there. We have the H tequila. We yep. have the uh, the Cointreau, Cointreau. Mm-hmm. simple syrup, and uh, maybe all the limes in, in the world. I think <laughs> exactly. you squeeze in there. And then so, we're gonna shake it up. All right. And like we said yesterday, shake, shake, shake it, shake it, shake them loud. Yeah. Let the world know. Yeah, exactly. I got a margarita coming up over here, kids. <laughs> Everybody wants one. And the purpose of now that wait, too, so the are you gonna the salt the room first? Yep. So the guy at the end of the bar orders a margarita. What, what is she drinking over there? What is he drinking over there? Oh, they're getting a it's margarita. Salt. I want salt. one too. So, so old, uh, uh, old trick there. So another thing that Josh did because he used the drink, the glass that he's building it in, he doesn't have to wet the rim. Right. Exactly. I'm just gonna take this, dip it in right some in the plate salt. of salt. Yeah. Kosher salt, table salt, kosher salt's better. Any salt works. That looks phenomenal. Dump it in. You dump it in and you'd be done. Garnish it with a lime again if you want. Exactly. Right? Oh boy. That and looks fresh. Lime. That's the deal right there. Fantastic. Let's just put that right over here. Wait, yep. you gotta well, you're going to make two more right now while we're talking. <laughs> I was just going to say. We'll talk. You that. make two more. Look at that bad boy right yeah. there. Yeah. Oh my god. And I you know the funny thing is I don't like a margarita glass. Those funny looking like cruise ship either. glasses. I, I agree with Josh. I think that goes in the pine glass yep. all day. Glass where it matters. I'm definitely a snob about it. So for those of you, uh, so El Nino show was great. You you can't touch us though, Nino. Like don't even, <laughs> don't even think you can, right? El Nino show was good and all. And yeah, I sure Dave helped you out, but whatever. <laughs> You know it's never let Sargon forget that. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Meredith. How are you? Hi, Meredith. So, this is going to be... Uh, so, wait, wait, wait. Before, should we wait till we get three of these going? And then yeah, and then we'll, we'll drink them together. Yeah, we'll, we can, we can continue you, to talk while quick. Josh bartends. Can we, can we take a second and talk about Mother's Day? Yes. So, guys, Mother's Day is on Sunday. And I know it seems almost ridiculous, but time is uh, flying... I don't know about you guys over there, but for me, um, all the days are kind of looping together. I don't know Monday, Tuesday. It doesn't doesn't yep. really matter. Time is like doesn't even exist no. uh, in this Corona era. So we're losing track of the days. But Sunday, yeah, five days from now is Mother's Day. If you need anything, come order from us. We have a huge menu, so and uh, slots are filling up fast. Yeah, and not to be a downer, but it's not going to be a grilling weekend this weekend. Unfortunately, no. we're so getting snow on. We're Saturday. gonna get snow on Saturday, so <laughs> it might be a nice idea. Get the grill, get the steaks, do it at home, which I would do. I have plenty of reasons to not be in a restaurant. I love being outside, but you might not have that opportunity Sunday, and you might be wishing you had gotten some food for. Absolutely, yeah. It's your, not a day for like a family cookout, or yeah. I mean, especially in this era. But like the weather's it's supposed be to be miserable this weekend. So um, um, come down, let us take care of you. Yep. That's what we're here for, and we don't mind doing it at all. So yeah. So, but yeah, um, I mean, I guess they're saying 44 degrees on Saturday with snow showers. I heard 30s. I heard it was good. At night, yeah. Yeah, at night. Be 30, 30 and then 40. Night, which is um, ridiculous for May 9th. But, hey. Well, yeah, because today. 2020 doesn't make any sense. It's today, again, not too bad. We had a couple great days in a row. Um, today started out nice. It's chilly. It's getting chilly right now. But. So, because we're not uh, open and running normal, we, we actually brought in some extra limes today to make these, but we're yeah. going to yeah, be a yeah. little short, so... Hey, I'll that's fine. That's like short. I yeah, yeah, that's I'm fine. Gonna, I'm going to give you a little house-made lime juice. We have I take it from Meredith. Meredith said, plus us moms don't want to cook. I agree with you, Meredith. So you just go ahead ahead of time and squeeze it yourself. Yeah, you just... You, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, if you're making these on, at, a, at a busy bar, you definitely want your lime juice separated ahead of time. So, so tonight is... it's. Uncle Gabe, it's Cinco de Mayo. That's why we're doing margaritas tonight. You, Tequila you asked margaritas. The wine question earlier. That was ye- yesterday. So today we're doing Mars. We did our Corona beer. Beer review. Yeah, yeah we had Corona. Now we got margaritas. So, to straw or not to straw? I don't. Because you like the I salt. I want the right? salt every time. Well, so I, I don't like. I use the straw because I'll do like a little dab and then I'll drink it. Gotcha. And then I work my way around the glass. Mm-hmm. 
Do you mind if I get the original one? No. All right. All right. Uh, hold on. Cheers. Arriba. Arriba. Abajo. Abajo. A central. central al dentro. Yeah. So, right away. Yep. That's a little tart for me. So there was mine's, a little, I little like bit mine. of lime in there. Yeah. Mine's good. I might have not even needed a salt rim, but I'll be honest with you. The tequila made... I'm adding a little more simple of mine. Tequila made all the difference in the world for me. Yeah. All it's a nice tequila in there. Yep. Yeah, so if you put as much lime juice in as Josh did, it's gonna, it needs a little something to offset yeah. it. So maybe double the sweet simple. Mm -hmm. Well, so near the end there, Josh did squeeze a lot of lime juice. Yes, so. he did. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm interested in what yours tastes, but I'm not going to share it with you. Well, um. I know we learned from yesterday. I guess that was a bad move on my end. Mm -hmm. Well, we're trying to build herd immunity, but we shouldn't, <laughs> all three of us, we shouldn't, the three of us shouldn't get it at the same time. No, no, we will never. <laughs> Uh, fun. So that was, uh, this is awesome. Yeah. This has like been um, oddly a very fun single de Mayo. I know it probably doesn't hold up to the other ones, but there's just something to be said about being, you know, with your friends and watch, with sure, your guys you guys at home watching us and just kind of being, hanging out. It's a lot of fun. Yeah. And plus I didn't get the margarita with all the lime juice. <laughs> <laughs> Any other updates? Anything else you want to chat about? Any um, you guys send questions in, yep. give us comments. We'll, we go back and look at them afterwards. So if there's anything you want us to talk about, um, food wise, drink wise, we're going to do, we'll do more you know, food. I think just the only thing, uh, while we, while we sip on these, this actually episodes have gone longer than normal, but I'll be, uh, one thing I just want to talk to Sean, since we have a full drink here, um, the food shortages. That yeah. was something that got brought up it's, today. Uh, it hit us quick. It's starting. So. Like we said yesterday and, and today, we might be able to get, even us, it might be difficult, but we'll do our damnedest to help you guys out. If there's anything you can't find in the supermarkets or whatever, come reach out and, we'll, and, and ask and let us know where you're at. Yep. Yeah, but we're hearing reports. I mean, everyone knows, right? The meat packing plants, the Tyson closed down a bunch of facilities. Uh, we got pork, beef. They're all, they're all closing places down. Now, hopefully... They go home, get healthy, and open up again. Mm -hmm. um, so it, it, it's not a matter of the farmers are fine. They're, they're, matter of fact, they're slaughtering pigs for no reason. They're, pl <laughs> they're plowing under vegetables. So the food's there. It's the supply chain part that's screwed up. But yeah. we're not, we're, it's not a plight. Like, it's a blight. We're not running out of food. Yeah. They just don't know how to get it to the right places. So hopefully it eases quickly. But, uh, but we're starting to see prices go up really quickly. Beef going up quickly. Um, seafood's through the roof. We yeah. priced out some lobster yesterday. We're like, oh, let's put the lobster roll back on. We'd have to sell the lobster roll for like 30 bucks. It's so, so expensive and, right now. So I guess a long way of two of saying, like, just be patient with the menu. Yep. The menu changes abruptly. Just know that <laughs> we that's, can't get the stuff. supply chain is yeah. uh, all screwed up. So, But again, happy single de Mayo to everyone. And uh, cheers. cheers. And I, I, I like this cheers that you had. We're going to do yeah. one more time. Okay. Absolutely. So uh, Arriba, which means like Arriba. Arriba, right? Up. Above. Up. Above, above. Down. Below. Below. In the middle. El Centro. El Centro. Like El Dentro, right? In your mouth. <laughs> Fun. Cheers again, guys. Happy Cinco de Mayo. We'll see you guys uh, tomorrow. Tomorrow is, what is tomorrow? It's Revenge of the Sixth. Revenge of the Sixth. <laughs> <laughs> so tomorrow so we have a we red drink. To, might, yeah, I might be, well, I don't know if we'll do another Star Wars theme one, but. Why not? A you don't have to do it again until next year. <laughs> awesome. We'll figure it out. Yeah. And I think we're going to do these at 8 o'clock is what we decided, right? 8 o'clock every day. Last call. Yep. We last, last call. Last call. Baby. We do, we're done with service at 8. So yep. Last 8 o'clock. As soon as uh, they're done in the kitchen, we come on to you guys and, and we'll share our uh, drink. I mean, we're not going to come on to you. Well, we might, Josh. Don't, yeah. don't, don't under might. promise. <laughs> uh, I'm getting, I'm getting kind of lonely. <laughs> okay, on that note, let's stop it. See Thanks, guys. See you Bye, later. <laughs> oh, I got a whole ton of hearts.